democracy. They're also the most strongly white nationalist and white Christian nationalist. And fourth, they are most likely to dis excuse or justify violence as an acceptable alternative to peaceful public discourse. So you mentioned a lot of negative factors <laughs> about, about this. The purpose of the clause, if he is in peace, is because they understand they are giving him political coverage with his supporters. Them being and having still the majority of the population and the electoral vote, if they are able to get him in power, then he will be allow them to commit the genocide that they need to suppress the black growth. If he were impeached and convicted first. During the 1960s, King was very divisive figure. The last Gullah poll to ask about his popularity during his lifetime taken in 1966 found his unfavorable rating was 63%. His If through those Gullah polls you cannot see that American whites lack a moral compass, that a person who promoted nonviolence movement in order to uh, 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 protest the oppression that black Americans was going through, especially during the Jim Crow. As a starting point, the problems that rural America has, which are very real and very profound, mm -hmm. um, they have uh, the more uh, problematic uh, education systems. They have right. poor infrastructure. They've had a, a lack of economic opportunity. We've seen a lot of manufacturing jobs leave from rural areas. And mm -hmm. that kind of left them open to someone like Donald Trump who would come along and tell them something that was true, that there is a system that has not served them well. Mm -hmm. And he said... They're pissed off. They are pissed off and they have some reason to be. Mm -hmm. But black America did not have a reason to be upset about the Jim Crow, about the discrimination that we face here in America, a country that we built, or the continued de de industrialization of our communities to this day, the continued economic castration of the black community. So we don't have a reason to be upset, but white America, rural America, feel they have a justification for being upset and opposing us when we try to lift ourselves out of these same conditions. You have to understand these people lack any ability to see your humanity. They have a us against them mentality and their whole objective is your destruction. They're plotting and planning for your genocide. On July 2nd, President in the 1960s, racial progress in the U.S. was at a turning point. Activists won major civil rights victories, and the era of Jim Crow laws came to an end. But at the end of the decade, there were still deep social and economic gaps for Black people across the country. Black Americans continued to face high poverty, poor housing, and unemployment and they still had little to no political representation. These disparities and an increase in brutal police violence led to uprisings across the country. Many young black activists grew frustrated that the changes they'd hoped for hadn't come. It's not just the opposite of being a white man. That's about the best I can breathe that fight. And the sad thing about it is all the things they have complaints about are the same things that their politics forced black people into when they voted in Jim Crow, when their parents voted in Jim Crow. And the same things we're, we're doing to counter that, they, they hate diversity. They hate any affirmative action to counter that their politics forced us into dilapidated communities, dilapidated schools. Now they're complaining about those same conditions while hating on blacks who are opposed.
by globalization and frankly late stage capitalism which is eating up all the mom and pop stores and taking away you know the uh, the extractive industries and coal and farming and so forth so they might as well vote on their cultural issues they might as well vote on God's God gun and religion because they feel like neither party is going to deliver any material benefit they're not going to reverse the closure of rural pharmacies and rural hospitals and rural health care treatment so facilities which are now disappearing not because of communism and not because of socialism but because of capitalism right rural pharmacies and hospitals are closing because they're not money makers and unless they're part of a regional chain they're disappearing so trump comes in and says let's just hate on cities let's yeah. just hate on minorities let's hate on immigrants and at least they can deliver on that and so they're not even voting in their material interests anymore and that's causing a further decay and decline of rural communities all right uh, reverend al this is the real disconnect they hated black political leaders for creating solutions for the very problems that they are currently are going through they hate the black community for already telling you that this capitalist system will financially oppress you. They hate the black community who had to create their own clinics, who had to create their own free breakfast club in order to deal with the lack of nutrition in the youth that was preventing them from being able to properly learn throughout the day. And they hate you for coming up with solutions we voted to voted for you to be in. Party is is still still here. Today, the work of Fred Hampton is alive through some of the same programs that marked him as a threat. Many of the programs that the Panthers created are now staples of our society. We didn't have free breakfast in schools prior to uh, the Black Panther Party's free breakfast program. Those free clinics, almost every major college campus got a free legal aid clinic. Um, the ways in which sickle cell testing is now respected um, as a disease by the CDC and others. Uh, none of that stuff existed before the party. I think that's revolutionary. The history of the Black Panther Party is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this government will never die. Never die.